guys this is Vivian and I'm back <laughs> so tonight I'm just I'm uploading a um, Facebook live that I did this morning and I thought it was appropriate to to upload it uh, because it's about pouring your juice out to the world <laughs> uh, I, was, uh, I was listening to Wayne Dyer on my walk this this morning and I just thought you know, this is a great topic to talk about uh, with everybody. And so, don't want it to just be the Facebook folks, right? <laughs> so, I'm uploading that video and I hope you enjoy it. It's about what's in your orange. What juice are you putting out to the world? All right, guys. So, I hope you uh, like this video and please watch the video then like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you know when i upload a new video and i will talk to you on the other side bye bye everybody how's everybody doing this morning uh this is vivian yeah you recognize me by now <laughs> all right so this morning um we are going to talk about oh so let's get first things first right so this morning i uh went on my walk i walked like eight and a half miles today I uh, came home. Good morning, Leonel. How are you? Um, and so I got back home, you know, I was doing my squats, trying to do squats after the walk. Mm, it's special. <laughs> okay, let's just let's just say it's special, isn't it? I don't wanna I don't wanna assign anything else to that, but it was, it's special. Um, so it's part of my uh, stretching after the walk, but trying to do a hundred squats after an eight and a half mile walk, hmm, special. <laughs> so, but I, I didn't do a hundred. I, I can honestly say I did not do a hundred, but I did do squats. Uh, and it actually, at first it was kind of hard to do but as i kept doing them it actually made my legs feel better uh from the walk you know because you know when you walk you get a little your muscles get a little tight so it's a good it's a good stretch uh after the walk so if you're doing walking uh whatever however long you walk uh try squats after your walk it it will be a little challenging right after but keep going because if you stop, yeah, you know, it's like, oh God, this is painful. No, um, it will really help stretch out those muscles, especially those uh, thigh and hip muscles. And so you stand up and you squat back down and you stand up and you're like, oh, okay, now that feels better. <laughs> so try it if, you know, if that's your journey and you're, you're trying to do that. So today. I want to talk about something that I heard. Uh, I, I, list, I was listening to motivation this morning. So today was motivation day. Uh, and so I was listening to Dr. Wayne Dyer. Love this man. Because he's so logical. <laughs> that just makes, it just makes you really, really uh, stop and think. And he's funny with it too. So, But uh, uh, one of the things that he was talking about is what... Um, what comes out of us, you know, in, in certain situations. And the analogy that he gave is basically is, is the title that I put on my, uh, on my life. Uh, what, what's in your orange? <laughs> so, and, and the thing is, the, the analogy was this. 
what comes out of an orange when you squeeze an orange and you squeeze it no matter whether you squeeze it hard squeeze it soft whatever what comes out of an orange okay orange juice right why why does orange juice come out of an orange and the answer would be because that's what was in it you're not gonna get apple juice you're not gonna get grapefruit juice you're not gonna get cranberry juice out of an orange you're only gonna get what was in it and the reason why he gave that analogy is because we as human beings tend to want to display uh, an attitude because of something somebody did or something somebody said or what something some, we perceive somebody did to us. But the only thing that can come out of you, because you know, nobody can make you be or, or feel any certain way. That's your, that's what's in you. It has nothing to do with that person. That person just did or said what they did or said. It has nothing to do with them. It has everything to do with you. So what, what, when somebody squeezes your orange, what comes out? You know, um, I had, a, used to have this situation where you know it wasn't really road rage but i used to just get really upset with people for you know, like cutting me off or uh you know coming over into my lane <laughs> that was scary but you know something like that or going too slow or whatever but then when i learned to look at it for what it was it was an event it was something that happened it was something they did had nothing to do with me. They weren't trying to cut me off. They weren't trying to do anything to me. They weren't going slow to make me go slower. It was just something that happened. It was an event. So what was happening, what was, is what was coming out of me is how I felt or the state I was in at the time. I was in a stress-filled state because I was driving most likely to work. And that's usually when it happened. It's when I was driving to work, I was already not wanting to go. So whenever somebody, you know, did something on the road, I reacted in a manner that was in me. It had nothing to do with them. It had everything to do with how I felt and how, and, and the, the, feeling that I attached to the event. And that's what happens with a lot of things in life, you know, uh, relationships. You break up with somebody and say, you know, say, say something happened. Say this person cheated on you. And what are you attaching to that? You're attaching to that, that they didn't love me. They didn't respect me. They didn't do this, they didn't do that. And so now you all of your emotions, all of those feelings that you're attaching to that event or to what happened are coming out. What happens? We get depressed. We don't, we don't want to be in any other relationships. We don't do anything else because, and then we blame that person for everything after that. Every all all of the feelings that we have after it, all of the, all of the relationships that we miss because of it. But it's not them. It's you. <laughs> it's us. And I can tell you that because I did that. I did that. You know, I had a relationship. The relationship uh, ended. You know, there was a lot of things going on. You know, not not only the the arguing or not or not even paying attention to each other and that kind of thing. It wasn't all just that. It was a lot, you know, it was a lot of things going on. But I attached emotion to it. I attached me 
to the events going on, not necessarily that they were bad or good. I attached myself to that. And then when the relationship ended, I was still thinking about it. I was still talking about it. And I said to myself, I'm never doing that ever again. I don't ever want a relationship ever again. I'm done. I've had enough done. So <laughs> I was attaching what happened with one person to everything in my future. And then I started to get depressed about it because I'm not a I'm not the type of person that I'm not a loner. Well, I, I guess I am in, in, a, in, a, in a sense of the word, but I'm not a loner. I like to be around people. I like to have fun with people. I like to do things with people. But when I didn't have that, I started to get depressed. Why? Because I was, atta- I was living in that past relationship and I was carrying it with me as you know I was talking about a few weeks ago you know uh, we carry this little bag of manure uh, with around with us every once in a while you know just carry it around with us that's that's our past and we carry that manure and we carry that manure and we carry it with it and then every once in a while we'll reach in and rub it all over ourselves uh, and wonder why our lives stink yeah <laughs> My life was stinking because I was just rubbing, I was rubbing all that manure all over myself. And my I was squeezing that orange, and guess what was coming out? All of all of the hurt and anxiety that I had that I had created because of that relationship. I created that. The relationship didn't create it. it was, he, he didn't create it. I created it in my head <laughs> and I was just letting out and I was squeezing out all of the all of the things that I was attaching to the events that happened and that's what we do you know we we tend to attach emotion to everything oh I lost money okay can you get it back? No, not that money, but you can make more. So you lost money. Okay, get over it. <laughs> there, there's plenty more money out there to get, right? Another situation for me. I have people that owe me money. Now, I could sit here and I could dwell on it. I could get mad about it. I could do all that, but why? Is it gonna change anything? Nope. <laughs> the money, the money is basically it's gone. Good morning, Ruby. It's just, it's done. But once I start attaching emotion to it and start attaching my whole life to the fact that somebody owes me money and they haven't paid me, then I'm just ruining, I'm I'm ruining every, every good thing that could come to me. Good morning, Susan. And, and not living my potential based on something that's already over and done. So if, if, if I did that, then where would that put me? That would put me in the poorhouse. And I don't mean, you know, a literal poorhouse. I mean the literal the poorhouse up here. Because if you're thinking poor, you're going to be poor. <laughs> and if you if you constantly let events and things that somebody did that you assume somebody did to you, affect your entire life then you know you know you're not gonna live you're gonna keep you're gonna keep living as if 
what they did is, is that important in your life and it's not I think if we all and, and I know it's, it's a hard thing to do but I think if we all just start looking at events as just that it's just something that happened and stop attaching our whole lives to what happened people depression anxiety stress all of that will disappear <laughs> because all of those are attached to emotions that we attach to certain events in our lives tony robbins told the story of oprah when oprah was a baby i mean like two three four or five years old she was molested by several family members. When she got older and she was, you know, kind of not in the right frame of mind because of all of that, because she was telling her, her relatives that, you know, this was happening. They weren't believing her because, you know, back in the day, you know, if family members did it, they just ignored that. No, no, no. They, they couldn't have ever done that. No, you just lying. You tell a child that and they, they know they're not lying, but you know, you tell a child that it just, it does something to them. So at age of 13, she was raped again, but this time she got pregnant. Then when she got pregnant, the baby was still born. So quite naturally, this is hard for a grown woman. Imagine how a, a 13 year old felt about that. They were going to put her in an institution because she started acting out, right? Instead of helping her, they were going to put her in an institution. And luckily the institution didn't have room for her so they had to send her back but who they sent her back to was this strange man who said he was her father she didn't know this man from a can of paint but they gave her to him but did she let all of that adversity all of that horrible things that happened in her life did she just let that just be her story for the rest of her life? No. Look at Oprah Winfrey now. She is one of the most influential people in the world. She's a multi-billionaire, not, not million, bi billion with a B. <laughs> and she's still helping people. And she's still the most joyous person I've seen. Did she have some problems? Absolutely. She had problems. But did she let those problems define her life? No. Because she learned how not to attach herself to her problems. And how not to let what people did change the juice coming out of her orange. So what was inside of her, her tenacity, her, her willingness to help people, all of that was always inside of her. Even when she was being raped, even when she had a stillborn child, all of that was still inside of her. So no matter how hard anybody squeezed, the only thing that came out of her was what was in her. So when she got old enough to, to do, to let that thing that was inside of her out, she did. She worked hard to let that thing out and put it out into the world and do good in the world. So, so what are you doing? Are you letting the stories of your past dictate 
your orange juice? Are you letting what happened to you or what happened around you? Because nothing happened to you. It's just what happened. It's just what happened. You just happened to be there. You just happened to be an unwilling participant. But are you letting that define you? Hi, Jackie. Are you letting that be the story that you put out into the world and say, you know what? Uh, I'm just gonna live. I'm just gonna live like this for the rest of my life because. And then you start telling that story. Well, I can't do this because. And then you start telling that story. And that story ends up being your, your story for the rest of your life and the reason why you aren't, aren't this or aren't that. Or the reason why you can't do this or you can't do that. But what juice is in here? What, what juice do you have inside? And are you letting that story stop that juice from being spilled out into the world? If you are, then you're doing yourself a disservice. It can't, you can't take what happened to you or what happened around you and say, this is the reason why I can't do this or that. Well, I was... I was abused as a child. Okay, now you're a grown up. I understand that that was part of your life. Great. Use it as your fuel to, to make things better for other abused children. I uh, didn't have a, a father. I didn't have a mother growing up. Great. Now you're a grown up. What are you going to do? Are you going to use that as your catalyst to help other children who don't have fathers or mothers to, to really understand that that's not their definition? That doesn't define you because you don't have a mother or father. What defines you is what is your juice is what's in you is what defines you. We're spiritual, we're, we're spiritual beings having a human experience, not the other way around. So whatever's in your spirit, this, this skin, it's just skin, it's a temple. Read your Bible. This is your temple. What's you are a spirit. And if you take that spirit, what does that spirit say to you? What is that? What is what is that? What good are you wanting to put out into the world? And if you want to do it, you can do it. You remember I was talking about desire before. If you really, really desire something, you're gonna do it. Just you, you have to be. You have to desire it and you have to be committed to it. Now for that, attach emotion to it. And boy, will you do it. Because think about it, when I was saying before, if you're attaching emotion to all the bad stuff that happens to you, and you're letting all that bad stuff dictate how, you, how your whole life is going, Imagine switching that around and attaching emotion to something good, something good you want to do in the world. Would that not also dictate how you show up in the world? Wouldn't that dictate your juice? What juice are you putting out into the world? You can define it any way you want. You know, you can be cranberry juice. You can be, you know, orange juice. You can be grapefruit juice. You can be any kind of juice that you want. But what juice are you putting out into the world? Are you letting your past or your 
previous story because you know your story is continuously being written as you continue to live the only time we say the end is when you're dead you have no more story after that that's the end of your story it's done but are you still living your juice has to be defined by what's inside of you not what somebody else does says whatever and in in life you are not competing with anybody else but yourself you know where jealousy comes from competition and you're competing with someone else based on what they can do and that you want to do why not just let your juice flow and do it your way and the only per and you can do it the best in the world if you only compete with you challenge yourself said you know what I, i'm oh wait a minute i i am gonna i do this a little bit better today yes i got this i got have this idea and you watch the creative juices start flowing when you when you do that versus trying to compete with somebody else trying to compete with somebody else and do what they do it's no creativity that's mocking you know that's just just imitating somebody create you create the 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 you you want to show up in the world let people see that unique wonderful amazing person that you are and let your juice flow it's like girl look at that grapefruit juice coming out of there you know look at look at that crab and say i like cranberry juice i don't i like cranberry juice so i'm like look at that cranberry juice coming out of that girl whoa look at that i didn't even know she could do that well, I didn't even know he could do that. Well, you didn't know, but I, I'm going to show you. Think of it that way. And if you have whatever that goal, whatever that burning desire is that you have with everybody. That you want to help people. Do it. Don't let another day go by without letting your juice out. And don't let anybody squeeze your juice and change it to squeeze your orange and change it into some other juice. That can't happen unless you let it. If you let somebody change your juice into some, in another type of juice, it's all on you has nothing to do with them or what they did or what they said or what nothing it's all on you it's all dependent upon what you think about it what you what feeling you attach to it and what you do about it bob proctor says there's a difference in reacting and responding reacting takes no thought whatsoever it's a, it's a visceral response that we just automatically do. That's where the anger and road rage and all that stuff comes from. That's reacting. Responding, you have to think before you act. So how about we respond to situations versus reacting to them? In doing so, you're <laughs> Susan, you're funny. I don't want to be prune juice. <laughs> well, don't be prune juice. I don't know. That might just kind of make people run away. <laughs> but uh, it's just whatever. Just don't let what happens around you define who you are. You are an amazing, wonderful person. Get in the mirror and tell yourself that every day. Whatever it is you're trying to accomplish, get in the mirror and tell yourself every day that you can do it. 
look yourself in the eye. I saw a young man yesterday. It was a friend request that I got. And whenever I get friend requests, I go to people's pages, you know, to see what they're all about and everything. And he had a little video on there and he was uh, showing people how to do mirror work. And when he got in the mirror and he was saying to himself, what he has, I'm a king, you know, you're a king, you're, you're, you're magnificent, you're smart. And then every once in a while and in, in the middle of that, he go, well, look at me, look at me. I love you. I thought that was brilliant. It's brilliant because, you know, when somebody tells you to look at, look at them, guess what you do? You automatically look, right? How about telling yourself, look, look at me, look at me. I love you. You're brilliant. You're bringing the juice. <laughs> Put it out there. You are amazing human beings. Don't ever let anybody else tell you different. Don't attach anyone's opinion of you to you. Because it's none of your business. That's their opinion. Their opinion has nothing to do with you. It's, that's why they call it their opinion. It's theirs. It's, they, they own it. <laughs> it's theirs. You don't want any part of it. Said so no, thank you. Well, thanks for sharing. I know I used to have a teacher. Can't remember her name now. Miss Brown. Uh, that used to say all the time. Well, thanks for sharing. Because <laughs> people would say all kinds of crazy stuff, and she just go. Well, thanks for sharing and just kept it moving. It wasn't, she didn't attach any emotion to it. And I, I thought it was, that was pretty clever, right? She, she was just, she just lived life. And she didn't let what people said to her or about her bother her because it was none of her business. That was their opinion. They were sharing their, their opinion or whatever they wanted to say. And that was fine. Go ahead. Say what you guys say. None of my business. So don't let other people take your joy. Because they can't take it unless you give it to them. Don't assume anyone can make you happy. No one can make you anything that you don't want to be. Don't assume nobody, anyone can hurt your feelings. No one can hurt your feelings unless you allow it. Don't assume someone can stop you from doing what you want to do. No one can stop you unless you allow it. Don't let anyone change your juice. That's all I got to say, guys. And I'll talk to you guys later. I love you guys. And I wish you the most fantastically marvelous day. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Let that juice come out. <laughs> I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.